grew up in Chicago, Illinois, baby, on 63rd Street. Some of you people don't know, let me educate you. 63rd Street is in a place called Inglewood in Chicago. It's so bad, snowflakes won't even fall in the snow. Snow come out the sky, look at like a picture postcard, and they get right to 63rd Street and they go, hey, no, uh -uh, come on, the north side. Come on, come on. Come on. Too bad. 54 years old. Been clean and sober for 18 years. All right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, you'd probably be clapping loud if you knew about me. I mean, clean and sober from drugs and alcohol. Let me tell you young peepers something. When I drank, I used to drink. I don't drink like some of you people. I see you order me a little drink. She's so cute. Yes, I like an apple martini tea with a pink phone and a rowboat and a lawn chair and an umbrella. You got more furniture in your drink than I got in my living room. What's it? You're getting high decorating. What's going on? I drank for one reason only to get high as quick and cheap as possible. I didn't care if it was ever clean, a dirty jelly jar with a crack in it. And I wanted to know I was high too. I didn't want to be. No, I wanted to know, baby. I wanted mustache hairs to be missing on one side. I wanted to run out of fruit for three weeks. I wanted to wake up in the morning and hear somebody say, you have the right to remain silent. I wanted to see CSI Justice for fingerprints, spraying luminol looking for blood traces, a chalk outline where the gingerbread man got killed last night. I wanted to know so I wanted to be on the news when I get high. I supported the House of Seagrams all by myself, like actors, baby. <laughs> when I stopped drinking, liquor plants closed down all over the world. The executives jumped out windows and committed suicide. The stock market slid sideways like this and never recovered. That's why we interact today. <laughs> Feel bad about it. Drugs, oh God, shut down the ba 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 ba. God save me, big drugs. You, you young people, y'all so boring. Crack cocaine, run, the crack cocaine gonna get us. Talk to the hand. <laughs> Baby, back in the day, we used to get high on everything. Orange sunshine, purple haze, black molly, window plane, white crosses, devs, trees, LSD, the gift that keeps on giving. We was, we'd take anything we thought sounded like drugs. Exlax, Malox, Clorox, just so long as I was something else. I might not even be here. This could be a dream. I might be in the institution right now for the last 35 years talking to a turkey leg in the cafeteria. Yeah, Mr. Edge, we hear the people laughing. You're a comedian. Yeah, push him over there. Let me get some sun. I might not even be here. I knew it came a time for me to stop getting high. It was a sign from the Lord. I knew it was time when the police gave me a ticket for driving without a vehicle. <laughs> but naked with combat boots on and six feet of snow, sweating like a pig, waiting for the stop sign to change. Cool smartphone. Uh, yeah, and you can get it with Virgin Mobile's plan. $35 a month with unlimited data and messaging included. With all the web surfing I want? Yeah. It sounds like a data buffet. An all-you-can-eat data buffet? And you know who would love our all-you-can-eat data buffet? Big Lucy. Big Lucy? Are you hungry for all the data? <laughs> Get the season's hottest smartphones, like the Kia Sarai's, and get Virgin Mobile with unlimited data and messaging included for just $35 a month. From America's Gift Headquarters, Walmart. You have meddled with the primal forces of nature, Mr. Beale, and I will not have it. Is that clear? You think you've merely stopped a business deal. That is not the case. The Arabs have taken billions of dollars out of this country and now they must put it back. It is ebb and flow, it's uh, tidal gravity, ecological balance. <laughs> You're an old man who thinks in terms of nations and people. There are no nations, there are no peoples. There are no Russians, there are no third worlds, there is no West. There's only one holistic 
system of systems, one vast domain, interwoven, interactive, multivariate, multinational dominion of dollars. Electrodollars, petrodollars, multi-dollars, Reichmark, rand, rubles, pounds, and shekels. It is the international system of currency that determines life on this planet today. That is the natural order of things today. That is the atomic, subatomic, galactic structure of things today. And you have meddled with the primal forces of nature. And you will atone. Am I getting through to you, Mr. Beale? <laughs> you get up on your 21-inch screen howling about democracy in America. There is no democracy. There's no America. There's only IBM. ITT, AT&T, DuPont, Dow, Exxon, Mobile, and Union Carbide. Those are the nations of today. What do you think the Russians talk about in their councils of state? Hmm? Karl Marx, they pull out their linear programming charts, statistical decision theories, minimax solutions, and compute the price cost probabilities of their investments and transactions just like we do. We no longer live in a world of nations and ideologies, Mr. Bill. The world is a college of corporations, inedibly determined by the immutable bylaws of business. The world is a business, Mr. Bill. Has been since men crawled out of the slime. And our children, Mr. Bill, <laughs> they will live to see that perfect world. Where there is no war or famine, no oppression and brutality. One vast and ecumenical holding company for whom all men work to serve a common profit. In which all men hold a share of stock. All necessities provided, all boredoms amused, all anxieties tranquilized. And I have chosen you to preach this evangel, Mr. Bill. <laughs> Why you? Because you're on television, dummy. 60 million people watch you every night of the week, Monday through Friday. Lots of men died under that flag. That American flag was everywhere. Joe Mott carried it into battle, but it was everywhere. <laughs> yeah, in the mess hall, in the dance hall. <laughs> we had a great big mess hall. And they would bring all the women in from town, and we'd have us a great big old dance. And you'd look up behind the bandstand, and there was that flag. <laughs> oh, that flag was everywhere. You saw it in the morning when you woke up. You saw it at night when you went to bed. <laughs> Sometimes you even saw it in your sleep. <laughs> yeah. When the uh, time come, I saw Joe might fall with that flag. Shot him right through the head. Bullet went in one end, come out the other. I don't know where it went after that. When I saw him fall, I said, no, oh no, I, I can't let you get away with nothing like that. That's what I said when I picked up that flag. I said, no, 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 no. I can't let you get away with nothing like that. That's the flag on this side of the battle. That's the side I'm on. Joe Mott ain't died for nothing. If his life didn't mean nothing, then my life don't mean nothing. I had sense enough to see that. A lot of people can't see that. I just can't let him lay there and die. And the flag just lay there. Well, I was the closest one to it. I didn't even hesitate. I just reached down and picked it up. I picked it up and I carried it all the way to the day of my discharge. December 4th, 1945. <laughs> When I got out the war, I uh, went and saw Joe Mott's mother. She lived down in Georgia. I went down there and saw her. I was walking down the street and the white fellow stopped me. Reached up and tore my flag off my coat. Told me I didn't have no right to walk around with an American flag. I hope they let you keep yours. <laughs> I had to get
get used to because see, I'm on public transportation and in the Milwaukee's. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I mean, cause see in Chicago, the public transportation, the bus and the L is running. The L is a train, the thing got tracks on it. You know? <laughs> I don't want to go too fast. The L on the bus is running every seven minutes. That's a scientific fact. If a bus or L run 10 minutes, the mayor gets impeached in prison. Somebody is going to lose their job. But in these Milwaukee's. Uh, see, first of all, I noticed that you people who drive automobiles, you know who you are. I hear you talking amongst yourselves. You have your own little vocabulary. You say things like, oh, I'm just gonna zip over here, I'm gonna swing by. Bob, I'm just gonna pop over, swing and zip over. 15 minutes, 18 minutes, oh. Baby, when you on public transportations in the Milwaukee, ain't no zipping, no popping, no swinging, nowhere. First of all, when you on public transportation in the Milwaukee, you don't just run out there and jump on the bus, no, 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 no. You got to plan months in advance before you leave the house. You got to bring the family together. Fast and pray. Put a bullock on the altar and burn him up. You know, you got to get your 15 or 16 families to go with you. Why? Because you know you're going to lose half of them to typhoid, drought, the dreaded Potawatomi tribe. You know, you just... Gotta make sure you store plenty of heart attack and jerky, you know. Get your divine and rock because you have to find water, you know. When you're on a public transportation in the Milwaukee's, they have something that they laughingly refer to as a bus schedule. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's really just an old charred map you bought from a pirate in the old Dragon Tooth Cafe for three shillings, six pence. When you are on the public transportation in the Milwaukee's, Baby, you got to wear several layers of clothes when you go out. Why? Because the seasons are going to change a couple of times before you get to where you're going. It's an irrefutable fact. When you on the public transportations in the Milwaukee, sometimes it's a nice to be on there because you can stop to smell the roses. You know, you're in the car, you're driving, road rage. But when you're on the public transportation in the Milwaukee, it's an opportunity for you to stop. Smell the roses, the urine, the soap and waterly challenged. <laughs> Thankfully, since I've been on the public transportations in the Milwaukee's, I don't need Obamacare. Why? Because I'm immune from typhoid, bubonic plague. My immune system is like way, way up there. Saved a lot. <laughs> when you go on the public transportation in the Milwaukee's, it take you six months to get to where you're going. Transfer expire in one hour. That's it. You just stop. And see, that's the thing I had to get used to. In these Milwaukee's, see, you, your whole town shut down at sundown. That's it. That's it. The bus could be in the middle of the intersection when the other, that's it, the sun's going down. Uh, you're gonna have to get off here. No, no, just stand over there when the sun comes back up. We'll keep going. You're gonna have to get another transfer. Though. It expires in one hour. You can't get another transfer. Why? Because you're broke. That's why you own the public transportation. You, this is it. I get We can't go any further. I got no transfer money. This is it. And uh, so as far as we go, we shall, uh, we shall call this place Walkie Shaw. <laughs> That's how it got started. But see, I find there's efficiency to profiling. It is. You know, old guys like me, I'm just close to death. I can't, you know, can't waste time. I like to be able to just go, um, uh, black male, career felon, good drugs, watch your purse. Mexican works real hard, little or no money, he'll cut you. S single white male, serial killer, mass murderer, no rhythm, and then I'm on my way. Got plenty of time for competitive bingo. Thank you.